All right, welcome in. Likes, leans, locks. No Lindy tonight. Aton in the house. Jordan's still producing. Don't worry, you're in good hands. And yes, we always ask that you hit the thumbs up button. You subscribe here to the Odd Shopper channel. We're going to go through every single game for you on the Friday slate. And if nothing is up, we'll just hit you with the lean, which means that you on the chat, you let us know what you like, especially when you see that number come up. You can pop right back up here and be like, yo, Shander, I saw this here in the Marlins game. This is where I'm leaning. Whatever it may be, the chat is wide open. Also, we have a ton of opportunities for you with some sports books that we want you to take advantage of, including, but not only, with DraftKings. And I'll tell you all about that. But as mentioned, as promised, we do each and every night here, seven days a week. We're going to hit the entire slate starting now. All right, first game we have here is, look, in Pittsburgh, two teams that are just out going absolutely nowhere. They've been eliminated. I don't care what happened on the night before or two nights or three nights or five nights. There are no trends that I'm interested in with either one of these two teams. They're both shit. Now, the difference is who Pittsburgh is starting because that is the target that we want. And look, Assad has not been horrific for Chicago. It's been tight, and you just saw that the previous night on Thursday. The difference here, though, is I want to target Wilson. He's much worse right now, at least from a metric standpoint, than Assad is. You kind of just have to go Cubs by default simply just because they are the lesser of two evils, especially because Wilson is so hittable, so attackable. So we'll lock up the Cubs on the money line for our first game here. All right, we move on to Cincinnati. Brewers still need this game. Clearly, outside looking in on the wild card, we know that. Now, here's the difference. Expect them to be extra aggressive in this game. The Reds, they hit shitty pitching. It's been a theme that we've had on the weekend, leans, locks, likes, what have you, where we've targeted bad pitching against Cincinnati, especially in Cincinnati. Eric Lauer is not that. I don't want to misconceptualize him as a bad, shitty pitcher, but He's hittable in this park, and I think in this regard, and that's what we want to target. Neither he nor Mike Miner are really relying on the strikeout, right? So Reds are happy to play spoiler. We know that in their own park. And the reason why I'm going to lean over here is not just because Milwaukee and their bats, and I think getting to the Cincinnati Reds, both starter and bullpen, but more so a matter of, Cincinnati can get to Lauer at the very least a couple of runs and that leans over for me. So you let me know in the chat where you're going, especially when you see this number pop up to Miami. We go Washington's in town. This is another situation Two just awful eliminated shitty teams at the bottom of their division. Washington, we know already stripped right down to the bone major trades earlier in the year. Now, nothing Miami though. And this is key as far as a difference maker, at least in this game, Miami still has these young arms that they're looking, that they're building around, and Garrett is one of them on the hill. Somebody that we want to target here. Decent ERA, the 119 whip, the 24-4% K rate, and this is Lindy's special right here, the 6-2 walk rate. That is definitely something that is going to aid this man, this young man, taking on the Nationals. Good enough to get to the Nats. Good enough to keep this shitty Washington team at bay. Gray, on the other hand, same scenario. It's just against the Miami Bats. So I have no problem targeting the under, leaning under here, expecting a seven and a half. Maybe we get lucky with an eight, eight and a half. You let me know when it pops up again. It's not just the thumbs up and the subscribe button that we're interested in. We want to hear from you there uh, in that regard. So Miami, we're leaning under. All right, to Philadelphia. And this is a big one with the Braves in town. This is huge, not only in the NL East, but specifically in the wild card. Worst things the Braves could possibly do in this series is send Jake Odorizzi the same night Aaron Nola's on the mound. It's like you can't make your big announcement when somebody way more important and way bigger than you is coming out. Like you can't drop your SoundCloud mixtape the same night Beyonce is coming out with some sneak album at midnight. Nobody in their right mind's going to hear or care or even give a shit that you dropped. Same scenario here. Like if the Braves really think that they're going to get or sneak one by by starting Jake Odorizzi against Aaron Nola, mind you, who's had a moment or two of just frustration and he hasn't been awful. 
but he hasn't been the expectation of a number one ace pitcher. The difference here, though, you still have some metrics that support ace level performance. The .98 whip for Nola, 3.38 ERA is a little high, but he hasn't got any run support at all. It's hard to really target Jake Odorizzi as a guy that you would want to back against this Phillies lineup as they get healthy and complete for the playoff push. Like it. We're going to like the Phillies right now on the money line. So here's the deal. We have this awesome opportunity for you at DraftKings. Couple of other links below where you can take advantage of the opportunities at different sports books. But I want to tell you about DraftKings first and foremost because it's so simple and easy, right? You can turn $5 into $200. So all you need to do is click that link below. It's going to bring you to DraftKings. You sign up if you're new to DraftKings, right? That's fine. This is for you. Take that sign-up money. It could be 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever you want to do. Your first bet has to be a money line play in the NFL, and that is going to put $200 right back into your account. So, again, $5 to $200 immediately. It's the easiest money that you're going to make across the board all day, all week, all month. And all you need to do is just click that link below. Again, $5 to $200 when you sign up, your first bet has to be a money line play in the NFL. Doesn't matter what that money line play is. Doesn't matter what happens with that money line play. $5 after that money line play is going to put $200 right back into your account. And what are we asking in return here? That you subscribe to the Odd Chopper community? That's a pretty big, big, big trade off there in your favor. All right, let's move on to New York. We go the Yankees. And Red Sox, ooh, this big, big rivalry, right? The Red Sox are awful this year. The Yankees are heading to the playoffs. They have a commanding lead. We know that. But here's the difference. We also want to target the two pitchers, Garrett Cole versus Rich Hill. Rich Hill is just not good. He sucks. He doesn't strike out enough guys to warrant any real consideration in this game. The 19.6K rate just doesn't cut it. The 7-2 walk rate's even worse. And look, the Yankees lineup right now does have something moving and, and really – pushing and a catalyst, if you will, for a lot of numbers. And we're going to target the same theory in the Angels game coming up a little later. But you're crazy if you don't think that Aaron Judge right now and everybody around him is extra motivated hearing that, oh, no, he's not the MVP and what have you. It's a perfect tune-up before the final stretch to take on a bad Red Sox team. Let Boston deal with all the nonsense they want and hearing all this talk about spoiler and this. You got to be good in order to spoil somebody's evening. And here's the problem with Cole against the Red Sox that Boston deals with now. 32.6K rate, 6'5 walk rate. They're not going to be able to hit them, let alone just survive that K rate. So like the Yankees on the run line, it's unfortunate. You know, we can't take them on the money line laying two to one here in this game. So like the Yankees, by all means, on the run line, minus one and a half at even money. All right, we'll stay in the AL East and head to Baltimore. Houston in town, Jose Urquidy versus Danny Kremer, a guy that we've targeted a couple of times here, the latter, of course, the Baltimore starter, and nothing you could really say beyond what the stats and metrics point to with Urquidy. He's a good pitcher, strong arm, good stats, good metrics, no issue there. Kremer has pitched well enough to slow down even the Houston bats. We have targeted Kremer before. We have looked at him in a couple of key starts for Baltimore, and it's paid off here on the weekend edition of Triple L. So another thing to look at for this young man, seven straight starts of three or less earned runs, eight of his last nine overall. I like him against Houston. I think he has enough right now to withhold that Houston Astros barrage, and the Orioles are desperate. Right now, I mean, they really are. Houston's just counting the days for the playoffs, and they're going to approach games now accordingly. But Baltimore still has a lot to play for, and don't get it twisted here. They are still pushing. So, love, lock, lock it up, Jordan. That's right. We're going to go under seven and a half in Baltimore as our favorite play in this one. All right, to Tampa Bay. Super tight playoff race between these two AL East teams. Outside shot, maybe, of catching the Yankees. You have that in mind. We know, of course, the Yankees take on the Red Sox and definitely favoring New York. So both of these teams in Toronto and Tampa Bay, time may be running out there, but clearly not for the for the wild card. 
Alec Manoa on the Hill, real deal. Nothing more. Again, like we talked about with Garrett Cole, like the numbers pretty much tell the story. Manoa has been dominating. Jeffrey Springs, though, on the other hand, easy to be lost in this equation simply because he just doesn't have the name of Alec Manoa and he's not Shane McClanahan. But Springs comes in with some really solid numbers here. Two really good pitchers. Springs is loaded with that 26.4 K rate, 5.9 walk rate. Home field is an advantage here simply because you've got two teams that are super close, two pitchers that are super tight. There is just a small edge. Even if it's a half a run, it's worth enough to lean raise on the run line. When this pops up, we'll see what the number is specifically. You can let me know in the chat which way you like, even if it's a money line play. But I'm going to lean without seeing it, knowing that I'm probably going to get the better return, the best value on the board in a tight race like this. Raise run line, and that's where we lean. All right, to Texas. Rangers, feeling it. Hosting Cleveland. Now, Rangers get that big win, right, over the also eliminated Angels. What do you take from that? Well, they send a guy that you probably don't even know to the Hill, slow down Cleveland, locked in this central race here, and the Guardians aren't slowing down. They desperately need games, especially since they're locked in this whole thing with the White Sox. It's almost disrespectful that the Guardians locked in this would send Morris in such an important stretch of baseball games where they need to catch slash distance, whatever you want to look at it themselves from the White Sox. So it's hard to really focus on one pitcher here. And I think Cleveland just coming off some frustration, some recent frustration is an easy target. I don't love it. Like I would love to lock this thing up, but I think even though there's a guy that it's it just, I think the Rangers have a slightly better advantage with the matchup, slightly better pitcher. And I'm willing to just take that here because of the value that I'm going to get on Texas at minus 107. It's a like, not a lock. It's a like. All right. Also, we mentioned Cleveland is wrapped up in this crap. They're all wrapped up with the White Sox. So we head to Chicago now and the White Sox host the Detroit Tigers. Much like Cleveland to uh, Chicago, a little pressure now, a little tight. They also take on a really bad team in the middle of their division race. And here comes Detroit, just a bad Detroit team looking to mess some stuff up. I don't know if they're good enough. Detroit is just so freaking bad on the road. So difficult to trust. But, you know, Giolito is not good enough, I think, to just shut down Detroit. That's where my brain is going back and forth. That's where it's wrestling with itself about, all right, well, Giolito's just not great. Detroit's just not great on the road. What happens here? Rodriguez on the other side, not hard for the Tigers, except, you know, I think this is where, and Ben Raza has the White Sox like every other day, whenever there's a baseball opportunity, the White Sox seem to sneak their way into his sharp play of the day. So he and anybody who's following those videos knows what I mean by this. But I think you, you honestly especially with Giolito on the hill against Detroit, you can expect the bad White Sox. We see the good White Sox or the bad White Sox, and it truly does boil down to a Jekyll and Hyde scenario. And I think whichever one the bad one is, I think it's Jekyll, or maybe it's Hyde. Jekyll seems like the bad one, but then I feel like it's the good one, and that's why it always confuses me. But expect the bad White Sox to show up, which means this is an underplay, and it's an under 7.5. I don't love it because it's 7.5. I would prefer it to be 8 but I'll take a like under seven and a half to Minnesota. We head to now, and this is pretty much it for the twins. We're sorry, Lindy. We're sorry, Neil Orfield. You know, it's a rough week here. Monday night, you see your Vikings get toasted. And then all of a sudden it's just it now for Minnesota from the twin standpoint, angels come off a bad loss to an equally bad told you team. But as much as they are hoping for this season to end, as much as the Los Angeles angels are devoid of any positivity, of any real hope. And, and why should they be? Their team is just god-awful. There's that lone bright spot who should be shining Friday night. The only thing they have going for them is not just Shohei Otani, but Shohei Otani wrapped up in this AL MVP talk. And whether or not you believe it's Otani or Judge or Judge or Otani, it doesn't matter because it's enough right now that's driving this team in this occasion. Whenever you have Otani on the mound 
you have to target the Angels. Without Otani on the mound, who cares? This team is dog shit. But with Otani on the mound, they have that extra incentive, this catalyst, which is not just Otani pitching and then also hitting its guys around him. I want to target Otani. That's why I'm leaning Angels on the money line. To Coors Field, and also because Minnesota's cooked. To Coors Field, we go. Typical stats and metrics for all the Rockies bats at home. You get the extra boost because it's Coors Field. Padres get a boost not only because they can hit and they have some talent at the plate, but they have to go up against Feltner here, who is a glorified AAA pitcher. Awful in his own right, the one four four whip. No ability to K his way out of any jam here. I refuse to put my money on Sean Manaya. It's up to you. You can do whatever the hell you want. I'm just telling you my personal issues here. This man is the Carson Wentz of starting pitchers. He'll look fine. He'll look good. He may even look great, but there's going to be this time, this moment here where you regret, right? It's going to be that meme of the dude getting into the car, backing into the car. Whenever you bet on Carson Wentz, it's the same thing. When you bet on Sean Manaya, ha ha! And he closes the door as he's laughing at you for foolishly backing Sean Manaya. Don't do it. I'm not doing it. The best way to attack Manaya is also to attack Feltner. And you don't look like that jackass who puts money on both Manaya and Carson Wentz. Go over here. It's a big number. I like the over 11 and a half, but let me tell you here, I refuse to target Manaya as a guy who can slow down Colorado, who still has positivity, at least when it comes to their bats and metrics at home. And then the flip side of this is San Diego is still good enough to get to a lot of pitchers. You add the variable of Coors Field and Feltner. Absolutely. I like the over here, 11 and a half. To Kansas City. I love games like these too. Sneaky here. Because Seattle, wild card, big team going to the playoffs. Everybody's talking about them. What a great story, rightfully so, out there. Recent slump, yeah, I get it. You know, struggle over your last nine or ten games. You don't look fantastic, but you're still locked into this wild card, and you're still locked into this excitement towards the end of the season. No excitement at all going on in, in Kansas City. Zero. Nothing. But, again, the super poor man's version of what's going on with Shohei Otani and the Angels. You've got Brady Singer. And we've done this before. Singer seems to pop up a lot on our weekend edition of this video where we've targeted he and the Royals, especially home starts, for money line plays. I think you're going to get the same opportunity here. It's super easy to write off the Royals. They suck. They can't pitch. They can't hit. They're all eliminated. They're going up against a team that's really good. Yeah, I get it. Like overall, from a resume standpoint, I get it. But you always have to factor in the circumstances surrounding each game. Brady Singer at home means a sneaky opportunity for some value here. So I'm going to lean Royals on the money line. All right, staying out west, we go to Oakland. Two better pitchers, for the most part, going at it. Big question is, can Cole Irvin outpitch his team's mistakes? Chris Bassett's fine. No issues there. The 23.3K rate. Only thing not really solid here, Irvin not doing a ton well outside of his low walk rate. So I don't think he can outpitch many mistakes made by his team at the plate, meaning just getting mowed down by Bassett, who's not really like a guy to mow you down, but I think this is just a bad matchup for Oakland. We've seen this before where the A's winding down, turning to younger bats, turning to guys in their organization that they're trying to get a look. That's not really winning baseball. And while the Mets have clinched a spot and while the Mets are heading to the playoffs, this is hardly a way in which you want to glide into the postseason. So expect the Mets to at least look like they're still trying and not taking their foot entirely off the pedal like the Houston Astros, for example. So they've been so off in their race that they still need to stretch out their bats and still need to treat these games like they're of some importance just, just to get some momentum here going. So that means an over for me. I think Oakland's going to have a shot probably in the first two innings but other than that, don't be surprised at all, because I won't, if the Mets put on an absolute barrage and get you eight or nine runs in their own right. Arizona is where we head next. Now, the Giants are playing hard despite the inevitable elimination. Gabe Kapler to thank for that. 
I'm sure he's wearing the hell down on these guys and they can't stand him anymore, but it works to some extent to where they clearly are responding. They also have the better pitcher in Carlos Rodon. No argument here. Giants will treat this like they still have a shot. I'm telling you, I've covered this man who is now the manager of the San Francisco Giants. They could be eliminated by 30 games and he'd still be managing like they have a shot. In this case, I will bet you, and that's why we're doing this video here, that the Giants are coming to play and that Carlos Rodon is out there for a full start. Arizona is turning into what we saw with Oakland, looking at some younger guys, looking at guys that are not necessarily priority ones in their organization to get a deeper look. That does not spell, to me, competitive baseball. So, yep, you see it there. Jordan puts it up. We'll lean. You let us know in the video when it pops, but we lean Giants on the run line. All right, final game of the night. L.A. Dodgers hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. A little different story for St. Louis on the road, especially here in L.A. Newer member of the Cards, Quintana going up against an unsung, not hero, but underappreciated or maybe under-discussed pitcher in Heaney for the Dodgers. I love this spot for Heaney. Absolutely do. He can take advantage of the Cardinals who dip just a little bit when they leave St. Louis, and you see that from a metric standpoint. LA's not giving up or letting up, maybe for that matter. We talked about certain teams ahead of their division. Clearly, the Dodgers are rolling right now. But I think, as we've seen, an experienced team with an experienced manager and a staff that's so deep, this is not your ace going up right now against St. Louis, where maybe you get three, four innings before you even consider pulling a guy. This is somebody in Andrew Heaney who's going to be out there for as long as it takes to shut down St. Louis and ensure a Dodgers victory. So I'm going to lean where I can get the most value in this game, and that's the Dodgers winning, but winning and covering that run line. All right, thanks again for rolling with us. Appreciate it. We cover each and every game for you on Friday. I'm actually back with you as we'll do the same thing Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. So you got me a couple of days in a row, which means you can hammer away on the chat. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you love. The good, the bad, the ugly, even if the ugly is me. Thumbs up button, subscribe. Make sure you're rolling with us here across the journey on the Odd Shopper channel. Thanks to Jordan. And thanks to you out there. Take advantage on your way out of these great opportunities we have at these sports books, especially at DraftKings. That link's below. You can turn $5 into $200 on any, any NFL money line play. We'll see you. Have a good one.